Oscar award-winning actor Jamie Foxx is the latest star to face sexual assault allegations. The 55-year-old is being sued over an alleged incident that took place in 2015. He's accused of placing his hands on a woman's waist before moving them under her top and putting his hands down her pants on a rooftop of New York City restaurant Catch at around 1 in the morning. Now, the woman claims the actor's security guards and several others witnessed the incident but walked away and Jamie Foxx stopped when and the woman's friend saw what was happening. The woman is suing Jamie Foxx and the restaurant Catch for compensation. It's alleged the woman continues to suffer severe emotional distress and anxiety, humiliation, embarrassment, post-traumatic stress disorder and other physical and emotional damage. The suit is filed under New York's Adult Survivors Act, which opened a year window to file sexual abuse claims. Several celebrities have been sued under this act, including Diddy, Axel Rose, Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby and Russell Brand. We are waiting to hear from Jamie Foxx in response to the allegations. In a separate issue, Jamie Foxx has recently come under fire for comments that were interpreted as anti-Semitic. In a post which has been deleted, he wrote, They killed this dude named Jesus. What do you think they'll do to you? Hashtag fake friends. Hashtag fake love. After being criticised for the post, he took to Instagram to apologise, saying, I want to apologise to the Jewish community and everyone who was offended by my post. I now know my choice of words have caused offence and I'm sorry. That was never my intent. Earlier this year, Jamie Foxx was rushed to hospital after suffering a medical complication that required months of treatment. The 55-year-old shared a message to fans on Instagram saying it's been an unexpected dark journey, but I can see the light. I'm thankful to everyone that reached out and sent well wishes and prayers. I have a lot of people to thank. You just don't know how much it meant. I will be thanking all of you personally, and if you didn't know, God is good all day, every day. We are waiting to hear from Jamie Foxx in response to the sexual assault allegations, but as I mentioned, there are several high-profile figures being sued under New York's Adult Survivors Act, including Russell Brand. Here is commentator Tonya Buxton's response to how the media handled the serious harassment and stalking allegations against him. Now, a second British police force has initiated an investigation in response to allegations of harassment and stalking against actor and comedian Russell Brand. These allegations emerged after reports by the Sunday Times newspaper and Channel 4 TV's Dispatches documentary program where four women accused Brand of historic sex offences. The 48-year-old has vehemently denied these very serious criminal allegations, asserting on his social media platforms that he has never engaged in non-consensual sex. In the wake of these allegations, corporations such as YouTube suspend the comedian from making money from adverts while the BBC has removed all of its content relating to Brad. Joining me now is author and broadcaster Tonya Buxton. Tonya, what are your thoughts on this whole saga and also this second investigation that's been opened? Well, it feels very much like a witch hunt. And one of the things that we are supposed to have in this country is innocent until proved guilty. Now, he hasn't even been charged yet and he has had trial by media. I've never seen anything like it before. It is absolutely incredible the way that they've gone for him. And the thing about Russell Brand is that he has admitted that he was a sex addict. He was also a heroin addict and an alcoholic. Um, and he says that he treated women very badly. He's actually repented for all of this. From what I can gather, he's happily married now. He's just had his third child with his wife. He does a lot of good work. Um, and yet the media would have it that he is this absolute sex pest. Now, I don't know whether he is or not. I know that he did behave very badly in the early noughties um, and he admits it all. But the way the media has gone for him is just unbelievable and unprecedented ever before to have this type of witch hunt. Now these allegations are certainly very serious, but like you say, there are allegations at this point. Do you think the move by companies like YouTube to demonetize him undermine the due process we're all entitled to and the, the entire concept of innocent until proven guilty? 
Absolutely. It completely, it's, it's, it, but also it's, they're cherry picking who they want to defund and who they don't want to defund. Uh, just to say there was a rapper, so I'm just looking up his name, Tory Lane. He shot a woman in the feet while screaming dance, the word dance. Uh, he's in prison for 10 mm. years, uh, yet YouTube has, is still monetizing his YouTube. He's still making money mm. from his YouTube. He's a convicted criminal. So I don't understand where someone hasn't even been tried, hasn't even had a police investigation aimed at him. He hasn't been called in by the police at all. They're just looking at things. He is an innocent man until proved guilty. How YouTube feel that it is their right to go in and stop someone making a living. He's a father of three, he's a married man. On what grounds do they think that they're capable of doing that? But what's even more shocking for us Brits is that our MPs have written to Rumble to ask them to think about mm. taking down his his platform there and stop him from being monetized there. They've written for the channel that I work to written to the channel that I work for, which is GB News, uh, to reflect on one of the other presenters who spoke uh, in defence of innocent until proved guilty on our show. Um, it's it's incredible the amount of high level people that are coming into this and trying to accuse this man who is still innocent to bring him down who has as yet to have a charge against him it's it's you have to wonder you know when he was in the late noughties working for the BBC and Channel 4 and behaving really badly and getting away with everything, almost encouraged to mm. behave badly. No one was saying anything because he was the lovey of the left then. The left loved him. He used yes. to write for The Guardian, for goodness sake. But since he has repented, he has woken up and he is really viewing, as it were, a lot of truths that are happening at the moment about Big Pharma, about globalists, about world views on things, the, the way that the big globalists are controlling the world, and also the lack of our freedom in these countries. We feel we're in a democratic country, but we're not. Our democracies and our freedoms are being infringed upon constantly. Do you think this is the reason that they've gone for him now? I don't know. Well, yes, when he was a deviant commie and supporting Jeremy Corbyn, uh, we, we weren't hearing any of these stories and certainly uh, we didn't have members of the press and even politicians uh, campaigning for him to be deplatformed. That's what makes me uncomfortable. I mean, if he's guilty of any of the things he's been accused of, then uh, lock him up, throw away the key. But until there is due process, there's actually allegations that are attested in a court of law, you can't deprive someone of their livelihood. Uh, now, you mentioned GB News. Uh, the columnist Alison Pearson has uh, written a fantastic piece in defence of GB News in The Telegraph following the channel's recent controversies. Uh, there have been calls from within the leftist establishment to shut down the conservative news station following off-colour comments made by presenter Lawrence Fox last week. Uh, Tony, it's clear that many of the elite in the UK are not comfortable with the mere existence of GB News, the fact that it provides audiences with a different point of view. Absolutely. I mean, it's completely outrageous. And again, it's such a one-sided view. You know, when, when some of these other people uh, have said terrible things on live television, or not even live, they've actually broadcast things, things like uh, hoping that Nigel Farage has had acid thrown in his face. That's what Joe Brand said. She was disappointed mm. that it was milkshake show uh, thrown at him. Why not battery acid? Uh. Or uh, we've had actresses, Margolis, uh, Miriam Margolis, say that she hopes uh, Boris dies of COVID. I mean, nothing happens mm. not to, to the presenter, not to the broadcaster then but now everyone's trying to take down GB News and the reality is is they're frightened. GB News has just grown and grown in strength. Many times we outrate Sky and the BBC because we are the channel of the people. GB News is the channel of the people and they are telling truths that most channels don't say, that every other channel is just taking a straight line, basically saying what everybody mm -hmm. else says. And they just don't like the fact that we are rocking the boat. And we've had 
It's incredible that we've had things, people like uh, Katie Rizal of uh, BBC, who said uh, that we are polluting, <laughs> polluting the public debate. Ugh. So by actually giving a debate, we have both sides. I have some really heated debates with some amazing left-leaning or extreme left mm. people that come and commentate at GB News. I mean, they get quite heated. It's great. But there's always both sides of the story. And that's what's really, really lacking in Britain at the moment on television. And I think the main thing is, is that the common man is represented by GB News. We are the people's channel because all the other mainstream media and the BBC have have just let them down. And what's proof of that is at the moment it's uh, the Conservative Party conference and both Priti Patel and Liz Truss have stated just that, that GB News is a refreshing channel that's not giving in to the woke left agenda and actually giving the people what they want to hear.